Whoa. Hello and welcome to today's video and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you some tips, tricks and everything like that with Astro Photography and I'm going to show you how to get results like this, results like this and even results like this all in one photo shoot which is really awesome and the best thing is I'm going to be doing this in my front garden and you at home might also be able to do this in your own front garden as well. If not this tutorial might be helpful for you in the future so stick around to the end where I'm going to explain from start to finish. This is going to be an awesome video and I'm excited but I'm going to pass on to a past Curtis now who's going to give you more information about equipment, camera, settings and all that important information you need need to know. So without any further delay, let's begin. Now starting off with the camera. Now the camera really doesn't matter. It could be an entry level, it could be a professional camera, it could be a mirrorless camera, it really doesn't matter. But I think one thing that matters a little bit more is the lens of choice. Now when I'm shooting style photography, I used to always use an 18 to 35 millimeter lens, but since I moved to Nikon 6, I've got rid of it. So instead I use a 50 1.8 prime lens. And prime lenses will be great for this, 35, 50s, anything with a smaller aperture number will be great because you can introduce more light to the sensor and get better exposures. But if you are only using the kit lens, then you still will be able to get some really good results as well. So as well, you're gonna need a very sturdy tripod. You might also want as well a shutter release cable and I'll explain why a little bit later in the video. You might also, if you are going out, obviously not right now, but in the future if you are going out, then what we want to do as well is maybe take a flask with you so you can have some hot drinks. Wear really warm clothing and have some really good gloves because it is going to get cold. Have a head torch or something so you're not like falling off like a cliff or something like that and just wandering to the edge of the earth. The last thing I usually take with me is a phone just in case of emergencies. But then as well, I can listen to music, I can watch videos, I can go to social media. I do have a star photography like playlist, which I just listen to music and that does include this. And that is all I can literally play all this video, I'll probably get copyright striped. Um, so yeah, also yeah, if you're doing it for three hours, watch a film, just keep yourself entertained because it is going to get a little bit tedious sometimes, you know, there's only so long you can watch the stars until you're thinking, I want to go home now, I'm cold, I need a drink, I mean I've got one here but you know, I, I, need, I need a shower, I need something warm, I don't want my warm bed, it's all night and cold. I do know that feeling uh, when I did this photo right here of York Minster, I was literally there for two hours and McDonald's was around the corner, I was like, I'm getting that desperate, I could just leave my camera and get a burger. That was, you know, so it will get a bit tedious sometimes, but just bear with it, the results will be awesome. With that all on the way, let's begin with shooting it and setting it up. So the aperture should have been an ISO. Now, you can follow the 500 rule, which basically means you go 500, divide it by whatever millimeter your lens is, and then you'll be able to get the result and see how long your shutters should be open for. And this will give you the sharpest result. So if I say, for example, let's have a look. If I go, don't know if you can see this. If I go 500, my millimeter, I'm using a 50, so 50. Now, it's, now it says to me right here, I should use 10 seconds because I'm full framed, seven if I was a crop sensor. Now this is a quick little calculator that can really help you get the best and sharpest results, but I don't always follow it. Because if you're using a smaller number, you're gonna have to then introduce more ISO. Now my rule for myself is between 15 and 20 seconds because this will show less movement than at 30 seconds because obviously the stars are moving so over a 30 second period you'll see a slight bit of movement and we don't want that if we want to get a singular shot. Something else we have to consider is how we're going to focus our cameras. Now the Nikon Z6 and the D7500 both have focus peaking which really does help actually to get focus perfectly sharp so if you do have this on your camera make sure you turn it on and use that and get your focus perfect now even with these cameras you are gonna have to use manual focus and adjust it so what i recommend with people who don't have focus peaking is turn your lens to manual focus go all the way to infinity and then what you'll be able to do is take a test shot and see how much of it is in focus by zooming in. If it's not in focus, just keep adjusting until you get it perfect. It's a lot of trial and error with the focus, but once you get it nailed, you're set to go and ready to start shooting. 
So now we're going to set up the interval timing shooting mode. So this is a shot release cable and what it will do is basically the same as this interval timer shooting mode on my camera. I'm not going to show you how to set it up with this though because different modes have different ways of set up. But I have linked a few in the description below if you want to go and check one out and buy one for yourself. Uh, but with this menu system right here what I have is the interval timing shoot mode. So I can set how many shots it's going to be, the interval between each photograph and it will tell me how long it's going to take to get all those photographs and collect all that information and data. So for example, I will set my interval timer for about 3 seconds. So it will take a 20 second, 30 second exposure, then it will have a break for 3 seconds and take another one and continue that process until it's collected all the photographs. Then I will go to the number of intervals. This means how many shots does it want to take. So for this example, I have set it at 600 photographs so that basically means that i've got 600 photographs to do and each of them are going to be 20 seconds long with a three second gap between each one which basically means a long long time waiting for it to finish it offers exposure smoothing which basically means if you know if the scene changes for whatever reason a slight bit uh, maybe it's a bit lighter, a bit darker at some point it will change it accordingly i'm keeping that off because I don't want my scene rapidly changing exposure during all this photographs because it can ruin it as well. So I usually keep this off and now that's ready to go. So what we're going to do now is wait until the stars come out and then what we're going to do is get the photos and edit them in post. Now what I'm going to use is Lightroom, Adobe Photoshop, I'm even going to show you something through Premiere Pro. So let's go. Whoa! Oh, right, so you join me outside in the freezing cold and we have been doing quite a lot of photography tonight. I've still got the D7 500 set up over there somewhere in the darkness doing photos of the stars. Now something else that you want to bear in mind as well is where you position your camera. So all my cameras have been aimed towards the Polaris star and what I've done is I've used an app to literally locate where my location is and then track it to see where that star is so then I know exactly where to put my camera so I'm ensuring that I'm able to get this streaking effect really effectively. You can use multiple apps, there's apps like a Star Walk and other ones that you could just choose from. Any app that will allow you to locate the stars and then be able to move your phone around so you can position it correctly is perfect. Perfect. Yeah, so far it's um, going quite well. I'm absolutely freezing, of course. Um, but yeah, I've been listening to some music, I've been watching a bit of uh, YouTube here and there, seeing what you guys have been getting up to um, on Instagram and catching up with all that. But yeah, it's also been good just to look up the stars and uh, soak it all in and realise, you know, how big the world is out there. And um, yeah, it's been cool. It's also been time to be like, thinking of new project ideas and new vlog ideas and new video ideas and it's been a really good time actually I've really enjoyed it and you'll join me when I'm not in the freezing cold and when I'm inside editing the photograph so let's begin with that and let's get some even more cooler and better results Whoa. Whoa. right so you join me and we are back in the warmth we are ready to start editing the photographs and making some awesome results and I'm joined by Billy Say hello. Hello. You want to help me edit? You want to help me edit? No? You look mesmerised like what's going on here. Mm -hmm. So we're going to start editing our... I'm probably full of dog hair now. That's, that was not a fun idea. He's molting like mad he is. So once you have taken all your photographs, you're ready to start editing them. What you want to do is open up your software. Now the software I am going to be using is Adobe Lightroom. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start editing one of my photos through Adobe Lightroom. I'll make it so it stands out a bit more. I'll bring out some of the exposure a little bit more. Change some of the colour temperatures to make it a little bit cooler. Add a bit more sharpness, add a bit more saturation, but not too much. 
I'll change around some of the settings and the calibration a little bit more just again to bring out those blues a little bit more because I kind of like that look and that feel and then what I'll do is I'll find a calibration for the camera so I'll set the calibration for that camera with the lens so it gets rid of all the black edges and it gets rid of that vignette kind of effect that is caused so that's removed quite successfully and then just add a bit more sharpness and then this image is ready to go. So then what you could do is either copy your settings on one of your photos and paste it to the rest by selecting all the photographs or just synchronizing all the photographs and they'll be all the same. With all that ready to go, what you could do is go edit in and then open as layers in Photoshop. So what this will do is it'll open up a Photoshop document and have all these images layered together. Now this might take some time depending on how many layers you have got. So with all of our photographs now in Photoshop, we can begin making the magic happen. So with all the photos now in Photoshop, what I could do is Alt Control A and that will select all my photographs then I can go over to where it says opacity and then where it says opacity what I can do is I need to change the blending mode where it says normal and I'll change this to lighten and it should give you an effect like this now this effect at first for me is not looking this good and that is because there was a lot of periodic cloud when I was shooting but what I can do is turn off some of the layers to remove that cloud now your photograph might be straight perfect right here you might have a no cloud so you might get a perfect result and if you do just leave it how it is because it is perfect now again this only works if you didn't have too much cloud going through i was very lucky where i had like maybe a half an hour period of clear skies and then maybe a 10 minute period of just some periodic cloud so it really depends with just a lot of tweaking from the layers i was able to end up with a photograph that looks like this and i think that looks pretty spectacular to say the least it is a really cool photograph i really like that effect and then from here you can just leave this photo how it is you can maybe put it in a four by five aspect ratio slap it on instagram and share it with everyone and show your awesome work and people will be like how in the world did you do it and now what i want to do is i want to get out of lockdown so i can actually go to a different location and get some even better results but we're not done there I'm now going to show you how to make a time lapse with those same photographs. So let's jump back over to Lightroom and begin the process again. Righty, 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 lefty. What we're going to do right now is start editing the photos again. And um, back in Adobe Lightroom, all we need to really change is the aspect ratio. So what I'm going to do is change this to 16 by 9, so it's 1920 by 1080. And then what I can do is export the photograph. What I recommend doing is just exporting the photographs at the highest possible quality and then you're all set to go take some time to export the photographs depending on how many you've got but once you have what you can do is open up an adobe project set up at about 4k if you need to and then what we can do is just with the photographs we can drag and drop all the photographs onto the adobe timeline now one thing we will notice straight away is that all the photographs are four seconds long which are too long to get this effect so what we need to do is click and drag on over all the images until we have them all selected and then what we can do is right click and then we'll go up to speed and duration from here, we'll then see that the duration is set about four seconds. So what we need to do to change this is make this 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. And basically what that will do is make it play in real time. And if you're doing any time lapses with photographs, this is the same principle and you want to do this with whatever time lapse you are doing. So it just flows like normal and works really effectively. And then what you want to do is where it says ripple edit shifting trailing clips. Basically what this will do is it will put all the clips instead of having gaps between them all together and that's what exactly what we want so we're going to click and tick that box and then we're going to press ok and as we can see all our images have now turned really small what i like to do is select them all again and nest them i'll nest all the footage together and then what i'll do is render it and then we are ready to play back this awesome clip and you might have a result that looks like this and i am really happy with this result that is something you could just do with your images as well you can use them for stacking you can create a time lapse out of them so you have multiple purposes for your images which is pretty awesome now again this was only taken in my front garden so if i did go out into any of these black spots where there is literally no light pollution i should be able to get a lot better results i've been able to take photos in the milky way before uh, and the things like that once you are able to push your skills that much further you'll be able to get so much better results and the further you are away from light pollution the better the results will be 
Uh, there is also apps out there, so if you don't know where your nearest like non-light pollution area is, there are maps that show dark spaces where you can go and travel, where you can literally just get these perfect photographs with no light pollution to affect your photographs. So yeah, that is what you can do with your photographs. That is a bit of a guide on star photography and astrophotography. I really do hope it has been helpful to you. And if you want me to see what results you get if you try this photography, don't forget to use the hashtag CP Photos. I've been interacting with a lot of you on there and you guys are really creative and would love to continue seeing what work you are creating at home or wherever because your work is awesome and I'd love to interact with you guys as well. And yeah, hope you have enjoyed today's video and until next time, Stay safe everyone, take care, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.